So we say who are these guys? We are the sisters. I'm Primer and uh, this is Benjamin. Some of you here know us very well because we've been together for uh, in this community for a while. But there are some uh, here tonight who may not know us as well. So we will share something about who we are. Mm -hmm. So we've been married for almost 22 years. It's, it's going to be um, our 22nd year um, of marriage. And uh, we met, we dated, and we got married in this church, very church here. So we've always been here. Mm -hmm. um, we have two daughters, um, Alana and Anya. Um, most of you uh, know them because they grew up here in the church. Um, uh, Alana is the oldest. She's married with two of our adorable grandkids, and uh, we love them. We love our son-in-law, Josh. And Anya is our youngest, and she is a freshman in college down in Boston. Um, so that's our family. In a nutshell. In a nutshell. Yes. So for tonight's format, we will first uh, give an overview of the different stages of marriage. Mm -hmm. After that, we'll take a poll, just so to establish where, uh, which stage uh, couples really believe that they are because we think it is important for, uh, for you uh, as a married couple to know which of those stages you are. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we will, after we review the poll results, then we will then, the last thing we'll do tonight will be uh, to talk a little bit about emotional needs. Mm -hmm. We believe that, you know, when you know, knowing the emotional needs of your spouse, if that is understood, it will drastically improve your marriage. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, you guys can probably see the slides um, on the screen. I'm trying to sh use two computers. But you know, in any relationship between two people, we go through different stages of development. You can probably think back to your dating relationship and how it went through stages. Uh, just like any other relationship with your kids um, and other people. And so I'm sure, you know, the stages that we're going to talk about tonight, these are specific to marriage, but, you know, you can identify in different relationships as well. So marriage, of course, has these stages. And as you can see on the slide, um, uh, we'll be covering three stages, intimacy, conflict, and withdrawal. Um, we will talk about what makes up each stage and how they may be connected and how they impact our marriages. So let's get right to it. Yeah, you may actually, you may probably look at this and say there may be other uh, stages, but we, we believe that these are uh, the, probably the three most important stages mm -hmm. uh, each, uh, of, 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 a, of a marriage. Mm -hmm. I do believe that intimacy is the stage that every marriage should strive to be in. And when I say intimacy, I'm not talking about sex or what happens in the bedroom. Although sex is easier when there is intimacy in the marriage. Intimacy exists when both spouses are emotionally connected, they're emotionally bonded. Mm -hmm. But for this to take place in a marriage, there are two very important characteristics that need to be present. Number one, each spouse meeting the other's needs. That is each of the two spouses striving, working hard mm -hmm. to meet the other's needs. Well, obviously this assumes that you know your spouse's needs. Mm -hmm. So I may ask just out of curiosity, anyone, can anyone raise their hand and say, yes, I know my spouse's needs? I see a few hands going up. Annie. Annie, yeah. All right, that's good. That's good to know. <laughs> she said yes. <laughs> Number two, each spouse avoiding causing unhappiness to the other. And this is important and to, to just to elaborate on what this stage really means. I'm gonna read 
from one of the uh, resources that we're using for um, our, our sessions. It says, when both are fulfilling the needs of the other and neither is causing unhappiness to the other, emotional bonding takes place. This causes a spouse to drop your defenses and become more sensitive. That is good, but it also has a few built-in drawbacks. For example, when you've emotionally bonded, you find that things that don't bother you if other people do them to you, do bother you when your spouse does them. The reason that happens is your natural defenses keep others distant from, from you so that you don't take their actions as personal. But when your spouse does those things, those natural defenses are removed and you take almost everything your spouse does as personal. So easy irritation with your spouse is a sign that you have intimacy. If you don't care about your spouse, you wouldn't feel any irritation. You would ignore, just ignore them. Mm. Some of the things that we do uh, just to create intimacy in our own marriage are very simple, but they are very intentional also. For example, we do chores together at home when we can. Mm -hmm. We take regular times, uh, which every Saturday, it used to be on Sundays when we had uh, our worship services at four, but now we do that on Saturdays. We take about an hour or two, we just sit down and talk about just ourselves, mm -hmm. or we talk about what we are learning in our times with God. We take long walks, pray and talk about nothing but ourselves and maybe what our dreams are. And just having intimate conversations. And this is important for us because I know that this is Desrin's most important emotional need. One of the scriptures that I normally go to just to re keep me reminded of what things I need we need in our, in our marriage for us to have intimacy is uh, Philippians 2. And we can all read that together. In Philippians 2, starting in verse 1, it says, Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there's any fellowship of the spirit, if any affection and compassion make my joy complete by being, of, by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose, do nothing out of, do nothing from selfish, unselfish uh, or empty conceit but humility in mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Mm. Now, what I like about this passage is that Paul gives us a list of words or even emotions that we need to focus on if we want to have intimacy in our marriage. For example, words like affection, compassion, being of the same mind, love, unity, self-sacrifice, humility, or just being considerate of the other. These qualities are found in a marriage where intimacy exists. Mm -hmm. All right, so now we're going to talk about conflict. Um, which is the opposite of what Brahma was just talking about in that one person not meeting the other's needs or one or both people causing unhappiness to the other is what conflict is. And when the irritation you feel towards um, your mate escalates enough, conflict 
happens. Um, so any intimate relationship by definition will have conflict, right? Whether it's with your kids, your spouse, your extended family, um, because really you have two different people kind of coming together, each with their own um, backgrounds, their unique preferences, their values, their biases, you name it. We, we come with these different things. And then we create this very interesting combination um, that sometimes you can find it very exciting, right? And sometimes it's aggravating. Um, so conflict is one of those things, you know, where it's, it's like a double-edged sword. On the one hand, you know, conflict can make your marriage better. Um, if, we, if we don't resent the, the, the challenge and we embrace, you know, the conflict, we learn from it, we grow through it, we become stronger. But if the conflict happens more frequently than our intimacy, for example, then um, it leads to the, the, the next stage that we'll talk about, and that's withdrawals. So if you have more conflict than you have more intimacy, the next stage will happen. I think for Brian and I, uh, you know, we definitely have this merge. We merged. <laughs> our, our, our lives, our worlds were very different. Um, you know, many of you obviously are the same, but we had some different layers, you know, as we merged our relationship, we were raised differently. We were older when we got married. Um, I was a single parent. Um, and so we had a lot of conflicts, especially in the early years. Um, again, as a single parent, you know, we got married. Um, I was a single parent for nine years. We got married and Brahma moved into my apartment. So I had an established place. Everything was in order. I like order. Um, and we got married and Brian moved in. And actually looking back, we often say that was a big mistake, but, some, but it was also a lot of our growth happened during that time. Mm -hmm. So um, some of the things that would cause conflict were little things, but they were important to us. For example, um, you know, Brian would do the dishes and he would put them away, but he would put them in places that I couldn't find them. And they're not usually where I put things. So I would spend a lot of time trying to find things and it was very irritating. So we would, we would have these conflicts and they would escalate. Um, you know, it was, it, it was a lot of little things like that that I think caused the conflict. Um, Brian had similar things that he might've been irritated with and we just clashed. Um, so, you know, as we went through our marriage, um, the thing that I think really helped us um, during those times, and it continued to help us today, is that our conflict was, you know, never consistently bigger than our love for each other and our intimacy. Um, Brahma talked about the carving out the time each week that we, we sit to talk. That's important to build in the intimacy and avoiding the conflict. Um, we also consistently wrestled in our relationship with God to get our hearts in the right place all the time, um, getting people in to help us talk through. And um, we had plenty of people help us <laughs> um, to, to share what, you know, their experiences help us kind of wrestle through things as well. Um, sometimes we just pray, read scriptures, wrestle on our own. Um, the foundational thing is, is having a close relationship with God. That's um, the biggest thing I think that helps us because that once we're connected with God and we can connect with each other and we can also open ourselves up to have people come in and help us. Um, so, you know, another thing I think helped us was just learning to compromise. I had to learn to compromise a lot um, mm -hmm. because again, I like structure and I don't like chaos, uh, but I had to learn to kind of let my hair down and Brahma met me halfway and we kind of like work through things like that. So they've been very helpful. A scripture that has been very, very helpful um, to me during this, these times is Colossians 3, 12. Um, and you guys can turn, turn there with me and read along. But it says, therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. It talks about bearing with one another um, and forgive one another. 
And so when I look at this passage, I see all of these amazing things that are kind of the opposite of what conflict is, right? Um, compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, patience, bearing with one another, forgiveness. Um, and I think these are the things that will mitigate uh, conflict. So when we consider moving from conflict, we have to move towards something. And these are the mm -hmm. things that, and these are all over the, the Bible has many, many passages like this. These are the things that help us move um, past the conflict. So we have to put these things on, in other words. Yeah, so we've talked about intimacy and that uh, one of the things that happens as, as a result of intimacy is that we are able to feel like ourselves in our marriage. Mm -hmm. So you let your hair down, mm -hmm. you know, your defenses go down. Mm -hmm. But then what happens as a result is there are irritations happen, you know, things that your spouse will do that will irritate you. And that's the result of uh, uh, intimacy. But when those, as Desmond said, when those irritations escalate, they lead to conflict. Mm. Now, what does happen is if, if those irritations get ex escalated and you don't take care of them, then it leads to the third stage, which is the withdrawal stage. Mm. And again, I'm going to go back to uh, the text that I was reading and read uh, what that what is involved with uh, that in this this phase, the mm. withdrawal phase. If the pain of the conflict becomes great enough that you find it too painful to live with, you will want out. At this stage, all intimacy is abandoned. Mm. There is little uh, there's little arguing happening at this time little irritation to a great degree you have rebuilt your defenses and pushed the other person away making her him or her distant if you're the one who is in, has withdrawn the situation would be something like this your husband if he has not yet withdrawn continues in conflict feeling painful emotions and wanting to argue, fight, or intensely discuss these things. Mm -hmm. You don't want to participate in, in those arguments or discussions. By emotionally withdrawing, you have found peace and don't want to reopen the wounds by going through conflict to reestablish uh, the relationship. Mm -hmm. Now, the question becomes then how do we recover from that when you were in that stage? Mm. If a person is currently in withdrawal, it doesn't mean that the marriage is in, tr in trouble or the marriage is gonna end. What it does mean though, is that it will be more difficult to repair, mm. but it can be done. Unfortunately, the repair process is is a painful one. If a mate moves from, if a spouse moves from withdrawal back into relationship with the spouse, he or she goes back backward through the same process. Mm -hmm. Remember, we talked about the steps, intimacy, conflict, then withdrawal. To return means to go back through the conflict stage. That's important to remember. Often when a marriage begins to improve, things get more emotional and painful. That's not a sign that a marriage is hopeless. Mm -hmm. It well may be a sign that the marriage is improving, mm -hmm. going back in the right direction. Mm -hmm. yep. Now a passage that has helped us uh, at least keep this uh, in the forefront of our minds is, uh, First Peter chapter three, if you can go there with me. In verse eight of first Peter chapter three, Peter says to sum up, all of you, all of you be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind hearted, and humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil, 
or insult for insult, mm. but giving blessing instead. For you were called for this very purpose that you may inherit blessing. Now, when you look at that passage, I like the passage because it kind of gives you the tools that you need to be able to even, as painful as that, that stage is, to be able to work through, or at least attempt to work through. Mm. You want to try to work to live in harmony with each other. Mm -hmm. Maybe challenging, but it is, it is what it takes. You want to be sympathetic to each other. You want to practice kindness, just being kind-hearted to each other. But most importantly, and I know this is what the one that challenges me, challenges me most, is being, having a humble spirit. Mm. And not returning evil for evil or insult for insult. Mm. Now, it's important for us to uh, remember that because I think one of the things that the, the author says there is that it is difficult to go from this phase into back into um, intimacy because you remember in this phase of when you are in withdrawal, all of your defenses have gone back up. Mm -hmm. Now going into intimacy means that you have to be willing to let those defenses down. And it's you that's it's not easy to do. Mm -hmm. And so typically that's where marriage is bogged down and mm -hmm. it may not end well because it's difficult to go through back through that. Because mm -hmm. once you've been hurt once before, it's hard for you to again allow your heart to be hurt again. Mm -hmm. So there's there, there, that's why it is. It's a, it's a stage that we don't want to go to. Mm -hmm. But keep in mind, though, one thing you want to keep in mind is that these stages are not sequential. It's not that you go through intimacy, you graduate from that, then you, mm -hmm. you move into conflict, mm -hmm. you graduate from that, then you move into um, withdrawals. withdrawals. Mm -hmm. Any marriage can be in one of these stages at any time, any, any time, time in the moment. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I know for Desiree and I, some probably in, in, in one day we can go through all three stages. Mm -hmm. But it is possible for any marriage at any place, at any, no, no matter how long you've been married, you mm -hmm. can go through these stages. Mm -hmm. So uh, I don't want you to walk away from here thinking that these are sequential stages that you have to go through. Mm -hmm. But those are the three main stages that we wanted to talk, to give an overview of tonight. Mm -hmm. at, at this stage, I think Desreen is gonna post a poll question here. Mm -hmm. We want you guys to go on mute. And I think the way it is set up, you can, as a couple, you can only answer this as a couple. But then when we come to review, we might want to see if, couples had differences of opinion and we can talk about that the only thing is that i think um phil you're logged in as well right did you log in as um i think you might have maybe you have to do the poll because you might have washed my poll out let's just say that <laughs> uh -oh. ah there you are thank you so this question is so this is again anonymous we i no one knows who is answering what Okay, but we want you to be able to answer this question honestly, authentically, openly. Feel free to say what it is. As Brian has said, the, the, you might have a different um, response than your spouse, um, but we want it's one device. So we just want you to answer one, and then maybe you'll share with us if you had a difference in terms of where you are with your, um, with your stage. Yeah, and the reason we want we want you to honestly answer this question honestly is because I think it's important for us to know which of those stages our marriage is currently. Because by knowing that stage, we are able to work on how to get from there to where we need now, to be. If you like me to. It's, yeah. yeah. When you end it, it says um, share results. So you share it and everybody will see the results. Hey, it says share results right here. Okay. Yes. 
<laughs> there you go. Ooh, I love this. Wow. 78% of you are in the intimate stage, 9% um, in conflict, and 13% in withdrawal. Mm, very, okay. very interesting. Actually, I'm going to write that down too. This is, this is helpful for us because as we are planning these monthly midweeks, it helps us kind of know what are some of the things that will be helpful. So even as you're answering these questions, it's, you know, it's, but collectively, it's helpful for all of us to know how, where we all are, right? Go back. One more. Okay, so we wanna kind of wrap up the evening with um, looking at our emotional needs, right? We all have them. So we want you to choose from this list that is slowly coming up here nicely for us. Um, we want you to choose your top five emotional needs and we want you to rank them one through five. So what is the most important? One is the most important, two is the most important and we're giving you some examples of what those emotional needs are. But of course you can choose um, your own. There's an other category there. Um, so choose your top five and rank them, which one's most important. Um, and do, we're going to give you a few minutes to do that. And then we're going to come back with some direction. Yeah. So, um, what is important here is, and this is where you needed to get a piece of paper, each of you and a pen, two reasons. One, we want you to take, say, three to five minutes, work independent of each other. Do not compare notes. You want to select from <laughs> this list and maybe your own emotional needs are not included here. So that's why we have, we allowed space for other. Mm -hmm. Pick the top five emotional needs that you have. Mm -hmm. And then after the three minutes, what we're going to ask you to do is to exchange those sheets of paper so your spouse gets to know what your emotional needs are and the ranking of those. And then after that, we will then all come back together and we can discuss what this exercise is about and how to move forward and uh, practicing those uh, emotional needs. And if your spouse is not here, it's okay. You can do that. You can share it with them later at home. Um, you guys can go through the exercises. Well, we know that Phil doesn't have any emotional needs, so that's okay. Ayana is not here, that's okay. Anyway, so uh, if you're ready, you can guys go on mute and spend it. We give you three minutes to, because you may need time to think through this. And if you have questions about what each of these means, please let us know. Take oh, three minutes. Looks like we're now. good. Mm -hmm. All right, first we wanna, we wanna ask if anyone can share whether if they found this exercise to be helpful or not. Before we even you can sp spotlight anybody, Phil, you want to, you can, or we can start spotlight with you. yourself. <laughs> well, I, I, I share with you guys, my top one was conversation, but my wife wasn't here to talk with me. So I felt really disappointed. Um, you could have on the phone. <laughs> No, this is this is great. I um, you want me to share the ones that I put? If you feel comfortable, sure. I feel comfortable, absolutely. I um, I put admiration, affection, conversation, sexual fulfillment, and honesty and openness. And um, I think um, you know, I heard admiration. I, I just thought about that. I think it um, I think just the way I grew up. I think there's a lot of insecurities that I have about being a husband, being a father in so many other areas. So her words of, you know, just hearing her build me up constantly. Sometimes I think I don't need that, but it does a, it does a lot for me. Um, I think it's not until when she does those things that I realize how much deep um, insecurity that I have um, with so many areas. So, so I think mean, I just, I'll share about the top one and you know other ones. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Yeah. Thank you. We can also share. Yeah. Um, for Brima, I'm looking at his. His top uh needs are affection, sexual fulfillment, honesty and openness, admiration, and conversation. 
in that order. And for Desreen, the number one is intimate conversation. Number two is honesty and openness. Three, domestic support. Four, affection. Five, family commitment. So you can highlight any other, or spotlight can, anybody can. else or, or Desreen. Okay, I have, I have power then. I think you have host and not co-host. That's the thing. Unfortunately, that's why. Um, yeah. Who can I pick? You know, I want to. The 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 thing is, I can't pick. Okay, I'm going to pick Jamie and Kirsten because they had their hand up last time. Yeah. They, they we might have missed. Oh, we might have them. missed them. That's right. Sorry, yeah. we missed you guys. Um, well, we'll each read our own. Okay. Yeah. So for me, uh, it's feeling trusted. That's probably one of the big ones. Affection, mm -hmm. uh, conversation. Um, adventure but but curiously like it's kind of recreational time together adventure travel that kind of stuff and then uh family um what's it called family commitment, commitment. You know, kind of being on the same page yeah. uh it's a lot of work to be on the same page with all the kids and not mm -hmm. you know getting divided and conquered by them so well and family was in mind too because our parents are getting older and you know me going to visit my family and us helping his mom and just that we're on the same page but mine were conversation, family commitment, admiration, recreation, and domestic support. Mm -hmm. And I have um, conversation first because uh, I think growing up, I just felt very voiceless mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. not that my opinion was important. And so when mm -hmm. we have, you know, conversations as partners, it makes me feel important and yeah. valued. Yes. Right. That's really good. Remember to share them with each other. So I was just going to share that I thought it was really helpful. You know, I think if they're good thought provoking questions and, and I guess those things could even change, but just to dialogue about them, I thought was really helpful and just be aware. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, very good. And, and Susan, you made a, you make, you made a great point there because what may be your top emotional need today, mm -hmm. five months from now, it may be different. Yeah. Or five years from now, it will be something different. Mm -hmm. Just it depends on the stage of life you are mm -hmm. or even the circumstance that you are in at the time. So yeah, it's important to know that. Mm -hmm. And so uh, as a way of wrapping up here, I think you may be wondering, so why are we talking about emotional needs? So you remember when we started talking about the different, the three stages of um, marriage, one of the things we started with was intimacy. And the number one thing for intimacy to exist in a marriage is when each spouse meets the needs of the other spouse. Well, certainly you're not gonna be able to meet my needs. Desiree will not be able to meet my needs if she doesn't even know what my needs are. Mm -hmm. And we're talking here specifically about emotional needs because emotional needs are extremely important in a marriage. Mm -hmm. And so what we're gonna ask everyone to do, I'm glad that you, you wrote down what your, your um, top five are and you shared that with your spouse. So we want you, each of you to pick the top two, the number one and number two. And over the next 10 months, we want you guys to really home in and know what your spouse's top two emotional needs are and work at meeting those needs every month. Like every month when we come back, we will go, we will take some time to just think of, to talk about how we're doing in those areas. And then we wanna be able to find out how by practicing that, how that is helping uh, bring intimacy in your marriage. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? Does that, does that make sense? So it can be Are over you, the next six months. It doesn't have to be yeah. 10 months. Because like we said, it might change along the way. So it may, well, that's one of the reasons you want to talk about it. Because True. when it changes, then you, it's by having that conversation, then you get to know it changed and why it mm -hmm. changed and what should be, what should be done. So Desiree and I learned about this back in 2020. And since that time, I know her top two 
emotional needs. I and I'm 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 I'll be the first to say that I don't always meet them, but I always end up seeing the result when I don't meet those needs. So it helps me to bring me back to say, okay, I need to definitely go back to meeting those needs. Mm -hmm. So it is important for us. So please let's do that and keep that to yourself. Don't share with us, but you do need to uh, switch uh, your, your sheets of paper so your spouse knows what your top two are. That's all we ask to do, the top two mm -hmm. over the next several months. Now, by way of wrapping up, If I can, if I can find my notes here. Yeah, so we started the evening by talking about just giving an overview of the three stages of marriage. One of the things we shared earlier on is that any marriage can be in any of those stages at any time. Uh, it's not a sequential uh, process that you graduate from one and go to the next, no, but you can be in any of those stages. But being aware of what makes, makes up each of those stages, it helps uh, us to understand what's happening in our marriages at any time and what we need to do to make sure that we have a place in that marriage.